Welcome to the Backwoods Gourmet. Today we're going to show you how to take one of these and one of these and make something wonderful. Y'all stay tuned. So preparing this squash is fairly simple. I want to try to catch him right down the middle of the stem. He's pretty tough. So you're going to have to have a fairly long and sharp knife. I wanted to get a, a piece of that stem on both sides just because of the presentation. It'll make the presentation better. Well, he's pretty tough, I'm telling you. All right, there's the inside. We got like a little bad spot in the stem down here, but so we'll go ahead and get that out. And we're gonna just scoop these seeds out of here. Use a spoon for that. We'll get that little bad spot in the stem there too. Just get in there with a little pressure. Those come right out along with the little fibers. Right, scoop that out into a nice bowl. Pretty easy. And uh, these seeds are also very good. Uh, you can just dry them and toast them if you want, just like pumpkin seeds. Very similar. And you see it's a very similar colored flesh to a pumpkin. So we'll clean this up and we'll get them ready. Okay, so you got two, two, uh, two options on this guy. You can go sweet or savory. I'm not that big into sweet, so we're gonna go savory. I'm gonna put about uh, clove and a half of garlic right in the uh, cup of that one and um, you know I like to get some of that garlic flavor up into here too so I'm gonna make a little slice you know, up in the neck of them there and uh, see if we can't open that up enough to get some down in there which probably gonna have to actually cut a little slot just okay very firm. So we'll just cut a little slot out and we'll put our little pieces of garlic right in there like that. Okay, we'll do the same thing on the other one. Okay, so I got some super soft butter here. We're going to put, you know, a nice uh, tablespoon into the bowl and then I'm going to just dab my uh, my glazing brush in there. Oh, I'm dragging my garlic out. Be careful with that. And kind of paint it on the rest of the exposed part of it. It's pretty easy if your butter's real soft. All right, now I'll give her seasoning something to stick to. That's our next step. We'll do one with uh, Everglades uh, low uh, one third less salt. Give them a good good sprinkle all over, and we'll do the other one with our our favorite Seminole Swamp seasoning. Those are about ready, so let's get the Dutch oven going. Well, so uh, you know, uh, Crazy Ivan asked on the page here uh, just uh, just last night, do we ever use real charcoal instead of briquettes? And uh, my answer to him is uh, yes, we do, and we have in the past, but we haven't in a long time. So today we're going to use some uh, the real lump charcoal. I just found this at Walmart. It was pretty expensive, inexpensive. It's the real stuff. It's a B and B charcoal company. It was like uh, twelve bucks for twenty pounds. Not bad. So you can hear that going off like firecrackers. I hope it don't continue to do this while it's burning, or it's going to be shooting sparks everywhere. Um, we'll let you know. So the other big thing on these guys is they come in all sizes. This is a fairly small one. And you see, you know, again, compared to the size of the Dutch oven lid, 
he's going to fit. So you're going to want to know about how big the bottom of your Dutch oven is. You know, if you got a big 14, you could probably get a pretty, a really, you know, good size one in there. So you're want to go on, when you go into the market, you're going to want to find them that are about six inches long uh, to be able to fit them. And we're going to put them, you know, with the bulbous sides opposite each other like that uh, in the oven so that they'll have plenty of clearance. So I thought this would calm down a little bit as the charcoals got lit, but as you can see, there's a stream of sparks coming out of there. It's just getting worse. <laughs> They're falling all over the place. Um, like rain, but shooting them all the way up, way up to the ceiling. Um, yeah, I'm gonna have to scoot that out a little bit, out away from the port. Uh, it's really firing up now. You know, I think part of this is it might have uh, soaked up some moisture because Walmart's been storing it outside in the outside garden center, not in the store, since they've already got Christmas out way before Halloween. We'll give it a few more, see if it calms down. So you guys that are starting out, I know you're used to counting coals, but you can kind of do the same thing with this, with this type of uh, charcoal. We're just going to put them in a ring, and then we're going to take some, a few of these larger ones and just nestle them way on the outside out here. Because with a nice flat one like that, you can get up under the edge. We'll add a few more for bottom heat, just a few more. All right. We're going to go ahead and put in our squash. At least they quit popping. We're looking at 375, 400 for the top of this, so go ahead and put them all on there, including this guy. Been about half hour. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, just take a quick peek in there. See how it's going. Oh yeah, everything's nice and steaming. Smell that brock, uh, the garlic for sure. What I'm going to do now is go ahead and put just a little drizzle right over the top of some Marsala wine and that's going to give it a little more, even more savoriness and make a little steam in the pot to help with the cooking. You see that our natural coals are doing real well on here. Um, probably great for, you know, doing longer cooks. So they are, uh, you know, losing some ash on them, and they, thank God they stopped popping. Right, guys, it's been a couple hours on our squashes here. So I'm going to go ahead and go in and take a look at them. They're looking pretty awesome. I just tested those with a knife, and they're perfectly tender. So we're going to carefully take them out and put them over here on the cutting board for a little while and let them cool. Smell wonderful. I'm gonna put the pot back on the fire though. go ahead and spoon out some but not all of the flesh inside the squash. I want to leave about a about a quarter of an inch layer 
uh, most of the way around. So I just kind of do that very carefully with a spoon because I want the I want the squash to hold its shape. So if you shell it out till it's just the skin, it's just going to collapse. So about like that, and this is just perfectly tender. You can kind of trace it with your spoon about a quarter inch around. Give you a guide. You don't take too much of this back here in the back. And that'll leave enough of the flesh behind. And this is all that beautiful garlic and marcella and butter pulled there. Uh, it smells unbelievable. So just being careful to lift that out but not go down there too deep to where it's just going to fall down into a big lump. Okay, these look pretty good. They still got their shape. So we can take this uh, this mixture here and we'll just kind of cut it up a little bit with a spoon. Make sure that all that garlic is you know fully incorporated in through there. And then we're gonna add some stuff to this. Okay, to our uh, squash mixture, just tasted it. Do that first, you know, depends on how salty your pre-seasoning was. Uh, I'm gonna go about a teaspoon of salt there. That's it. We're going to put a generous pinch of black pepper. Um, this is uh, some ground, freshly ground munders, uh, mustard seed and coriander. We want that kind of you know savoriness to it. I'm going to put a little bit more butter in it. It's going to help with the creaminess. Maybe another shake of. Uh, Seminole Swamp or uh, Everglades. That was Everglades. I'm going to mix that up. Get all those seasonings uh, and salt incorporated in that first. And then we're going to give it a little test. Pretty damn good. Now here's some grated mozzarella and a trip, uh, triple, cheese, uh, triple cream bergenost. The last uh, thing I'm going to put in is just a little bit of Italian seasoning. But you could go nuts here. I mean, if, if there's something you like, uh, stick it in. You can see that cheese is already melting already. I'll we'll put it back into our shells. So we're just going to go ahead and just uh, spoon it right back in. much in this one and not enough in that one. That's okay. They're sitting right here. So I'm going to go ahead and just smooth that back out. In about 20 minutes it's just starting to brown on top a little bit now so we're gonna go ahead and just put some beautiful Parmigiano Reggiano right over the top and this is gonna give it like a bacony flavor this is this is the real stuff from Italy um, 
whatever you do don't use that uh, plastic junk out of the craft bottle I, I don't even know what that is but it's definitely not Parmesan cheese some kind of Parmesan cheese food so Parmesan Reggiano over the top and that should uh, brown up real nice just keep rotating your lid uh, about every 10 minutes or so Right, it's been about 25 30 minutes and we've been really stoking the top of this thing with uh, these natural charcoals and that looks about perfect to me so we're going to go ahead and take those off and uh, serve them up all right so we're going to serve them up here on our long serving tray um, gonna be careful with them getting them out we definitely don't want to spill the bowl So I'm going to do them just like this right here. Like that. We have a little paper towel to clean the plate if we need to. They are beautiful. So what I have here is some of our uh, sriracha butter sauce. This is two tablespoons of butter, a tablespoon of sriracha, and a little spritz of a fresh lime. Just so, because I think it could use just a little spice. I'm going to go ahead and just drizzle a little bit of that over top. And then we'll have to put on the final garnish. check it out right up here and for a whole playlist of cast iron and dutch oven cooking check it out right up here we'll see you next time